All right, so we got a battery back in it. It's been sitting for two weeks, almost two weeks. And uh, let's see if we can get it running again. There's no coolant, so we can't run it very long, but I just want to see how it starts cold after sitting. So Phil rewired some of this stuff for us, so this all works again. So let's see what happens. Let's get the throttle and give her a crank. <laughs> Okay, so last time we were here, we flushed out the cooling system. We got that all done. Um, we repaired all the coolant hoses we could get our hands on, so we actually had to modify that lower piece. If you look right there, there's been a few questions on the Grease Monkey forum about how to do that. Basically, you cut it in two parts. So you make a cut here, and then you make a cut at the top here, and then you replace that section with a rubber hose, because there's got to be some flexible couplers in there. So we took out the original couplers, we just used some right stuff or gasket maker, bolted that on. Uh, the lower one you have to drill three new holes in to bolt the flange back on because the, 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 the couplers that were in there before were offset, had three offset holes. So you take that out. Uh, and this is 57 millimeters. Uh, it's actually 62 millimeters on the tube, but you can stretch it over. It's a nice snug fit. It seems to work well. Um, so for the upper, we basically did the same kind of thing. We cut the flanges off. Uh, we took out the rubber coupler, so there was a rubber coupler here, and there was a rubber coupler down here. They were about, I don't know, an inch and a half, two inches long. And we cut the flanges off and just bolted in a piece of nice gate screen striped coolant hose. And uh, we did have it running full of coolant last time we were here, and nothing was leaking. So we're ready to fill it up with, uh, I don't know, 11 gallons, 12 gallons of coolant, however much it's going to take. Uh, the heater system is shut off on this one. We've, we verified that. And... Uh, my valves actually turn freely, which is nice. So uh, and it's a good thing actually they're shut off because there's a couple more of those rubber style couplers back there. And as you can see right there, they're not in very good condition either. So once I get home, I'm gonna have to deal with those ones if I wanna get the heating system working. So until I get home, I've got no heat, which that's fine with me. Um, it's not that far of a drive and I brought a sweater. So uh, again, we replaced these ones here, Gates Green Stripe. And uh, there's the hired help over there. I'm on my break. Get to work. So this is the first time we got the bus to move under its own power. And uh, we just wanted to move it forward and back a bit just to make sure everything was working right. And uh, see how it goes. Oh, and there's Sage's finger. Um, I had to buy a new phone on this trip. I dropped my phone and broke the screen and it would no longer function so I had to buy a new one so we see a lot of Sage's finger because the camera is lovely Detroit diesel sound um, the camera is really close to the edge of the phone it's great to finally see the bus move under its own power a little bit of smoke but it's uh, been sitting for a long time so it's kind of to be expected that'll clear up
going on? Well, we got a coolant leak that wasn't there before. And I don't know why or where. Are you sure it's coolant? Check to see if it's not oil. Yeah, it's coolant. Because this, this is all wet now with oil. Some kind of... Well, that's coolant. I dripped a little bit. It turns out I didn't have the heater okay. valve quite turned off all the way. So we closed the valve the rest of the way and the leak went away. All was good. Okay, so we're getting ready to jack it up. We're going to take the wheels off. Um, the bus boys have been real nice and provided some indoor space for us so we can get in out of the weather. And... Uh, We've got some big blocks in front of the bus there. We're going to get all four wheels off and uh, start inspecting stuff. Um, we're going to give this impact gun here a shot. What's it rated for? I don't know. It's uh, rated enough. <laughs> we're going to give it a shot and see if it'll, it'll, it'll take one of these lug nuts off before we jack it up. Otherwise, we might have to go find something a little beefier. It's supposed to be better than the Milwaukee. That's all I know. Oh, and Stan sprayed all these for us uh, two weeks ago, so hopefully that helps. So. Let's, let's see what it does. Success. Yeah. Should we try another one just for grins? Sure. Look at that. Beautiful. Well, I think I want to jack it up before I take too many more off. Well, that's pretty cool. So the brakes have been updated at some point on this. It's got newer brake cans. You can tell because it's the clamp style canister instead of the uh, the bolt together style. And uh, so these are probably just a standard number 16. We'll know that once we get them off. We can read the markings on them. We'll go down to the local truck center and we'll get some, uh, some new ones from them. We're going to take the airlines off and get them to make us up some new airlines. And uh, it's, it's all stuff we don't know how old it is. So we're just going to change it to take that out question out of the equation and we know we're good for another 10 to 15 years but everything I touched so far looks like it's in good shape um, all the grease fittings I touched got lots of grease coming out of them so everything's been well lubed on this bus at some point which makes me happy to see and uh, I think we'll be in good shape as long as there's no issues with the bearings once we pull the bearings off Okay, so we got one, one side apart. We got uh, the hub and drum off together. We couldn't get the three set screws out. Uh, we didn't have an impact. Uh, Sage just got back with an impact screwdriver, so we might be able to separate them now. But I went ahead and took this apart anyway. I took the drum and hub off together. And what we found is a lack of oil seal. Um, so there's no seal there, but if we look in the hub, there's a, a big flange so and you can see it looks like where this was touching the, the flange there's the, uh, the, shine, the, the shiny section so I wonder if it's just like an oil slinger and there's no actual seal there um, we're gonna advise get some advice from some experts because I don't have any experience with this type of a brake setup before so we're gonna ask a few questions to a couple people that might know better than we do but that's what we found so far uh, the shoes themselves look like they're in great shape. There's lots of shoe there. Drums, you know, a little bit of rust on the inside, which I kind of expected, but they'll clean up. I think they'll be fine, and uh, we'll go from there. Morning, everybody. This is uh, Wednesday, September... I don't even know anymore. I've lost track of that. So I stayed a little bit longer last night. I got the bus jacked up. So this is the first full day of round two, working on the bus. We've got it inside. <clears throat> Going to try and sort out some wheel seals today. Uh, get some brake cans and airlines ordered up. 
We're going to jack up the back next, pull the rear brakes apart, brakes and hubs, check them out. Found the socket from Stan to get the inner lugs off. That's what held me up last night. Um, yeah, we uh, already started some cosmetic improvements on the bus. I just, you know, happened to bring one of those with me. And uh, the bezel needs a little bit of straightening, but man, does that look good already? I'm excited. Can't wait to get her down the highway. Back. And okay. And, uh, leave it at that. <laughs> okay, you can start anytime. Okay, so we're trying to deal with this spindle hub problem. Phil's here today. He's back. He's helping us. So what is the spindle hub problem? Well, I have two different style um, seals. The left side is the newer style, which you can get. It's just a push-in seal, a lip seal. This is the old style with a sweeper. And as you can see, there's not much left of it. I had to clean. This was just caked with grease in here. Um, somebody's not fixed it properly. It looks like they put new shoes on and just slapped it back together. Um, so what we're trying to do is talk to a couple of guys, JD, local guy here from the truck place, was it CN, CNJ? Uh, he talked to Luke and Luke apparently tells us you can convert this to an MCI hub. So you need an MCI 7, 8 or 9 front hub or tag axle hub, or you can use a rear tag axle hub from a 102 A, B or C. So that's the hub we're looking for. Apparently you put that hub on with the newer seal and the newer style sweeper and it bolts right on with these brakes. So that's what we've been told. Um, there's another guy, I can't remember the gentleman's name, who's fairly local here, who's in the middle of doing the exact same thing for another guy. I think his name was Chris. So it's a known problem. Um, apparently there's a known solution, but we got to find that hub. So we potentially have found a hub, but it varied. Way in that pile over there. There's half a tag axle. There's half a tag axle, and we think it's from an MCI. And we gotta get it lifted out of there and get the hub off. So it's it's right it's right down in here. It looks like an oil-filled hub, so I don't know what's involved in converting that to a grease seal, or if we can just use the oil fill. I don't, I don't think my boss has probably got too much wear for an oil-filled hub, but. I think that's going to be our solution. So we got to dig a little bit deeper into this and hopefully have a solution today. Look at that forklift just picked that whole thing right up. Well, it's right there, Jason. What? That sledge. Yeah, we wanted a bigger one. Oh, that's the biggest one I own. Well, I found it after I went. Oh. I can get a better swing on this one. I can hold it myself. Okay. So what did this come off of? I don't know. Either a 9 or a 7. That I, I got a hunch it came off a 7 based on the, the bevel down here. But I, it's been around here too long to, to know. <laughs> So we found an MCI hub that came off that tag axle. If you look over there, it's hanging from the chain. <clears throat> we got the hub off, and I went to test fit it on this side. This is the side that's actually okay, but I still got to get the uh, 
slip ring off the other axle, I'm going to have to heat it. I haven't done that yet. So I'm test fitting on this side. Um, two problems I came across. One, when I, it, it's on now without the studs. The reason why I pulled the studs is because with the studs in, they were touching the brake shoe. So I need a shorter stud here, this distance here. And the other problem, this is going to go on the other side of the bus. And if you look carefully, you can see that says L. So that's a left-handed thread, which is for the left side of the bus. So I dug around in Stan's pile, and uh, we found some right-handed studs, but they're still too long. So this one, it's, it's not pressed in all the way, as you can see, but now we cleared the brake shoes. So I've got two options, that I can either go down to the local truck supplier and see if they've got something with a shorter piece here, or I'm going to spend an hour with the grinder and grind them all down to make them fit, which is likely the case what's going to happen. Um, I guess there's a third option. We can pull them out of the silver side stud and see if this diameter is the same, but I suspect they're going to be different. Um, I might just pound one out just for grins just to see if it'll work. So uh, that's where we're at. So this brings us to the end of day three. And I just want to do a shout out to everybody that helped us on this project, uh, Sage, um, Bus Old Man Phil, and uh, a big shout out to the Bus Boys for getting access to their shop and the tools. That was a really big help. And uh, if you want to see tomorrow, day four, please like and subscribe.